Welcome back to another exciting episode of our French Chateau. We were busy this week, but all I kept thinking about is how I'd love to be sitting on the sofa in front of the TV eating a big bowl of Fruit Loops. But alas, that wasn't on the agenda. Lincoln finished removing the rest of the walls in the cottage, then it was time to do this. Okay. You want me to open it? I don't know if you can. I think I can. I need to clip these. It'll probably pull off of them. There we go. Don't say anything you don't feel comfortable with. Yeah, I know. Don't don't leave. Yeah. So Lincoln's going to close the hatch. It's not a hatch. What is it? A door. A door. We're going to extend the ladder and hopefully I can get up there to clean the tippy top. We'll see. Do what with it? I'm going to walk it down. You just hold the bottom. Put your foot back on the bottom right now. I mean, it's still got some scraggly bits. They could use Steve's roof ladder. Right? Oh, yeah, sure. Because you just lay that on the roof and climb up it. You know, you put the bottom in the gutter. Yeah. Well, he'll have to show us how to do that. Well, I've watched him do it. I, I don't mind going up there. I've conquered my fear of heights. Yeah. It's just you have to concentrate. Well, yeah, it's, you don't look down, you look up. <laughs> right. <laughs> just wanted to show the slate on the roof and how thick this is compared to slate that we have on other buildings. It's really beautiful slate. There's a, a huge difference between slate that's that's on our our roofs, right? Um, yeah. So this is the, the really old it's, slate. It's thicker. It's extremely heavy, it's really durable, and it's beautiful. And then on uh, some of the other roofs, we have this garbage which is 
so thin. It's still good. I've bumped into it over. We have some on yeah. that, that, roof. that roof and the other side where we put the Christmas lights. They crack. So um, whenever we're going to redo a roof, we're going to use this slate. Yeah. Um, I know it's more expensive, but it's it's more authentic and it's durable. Proper. Too. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big difference. So this roof has the good slate, and then this cottage, I think, has the the thinner stuff. Maybe not. It's, yeah, it may, it may be thicker than this, but thinner than that. Yeah. yeah, I think this one is, is sort of in between. That's interesting. Yeah. So you have different types of slate. Like these roofs over here are just absolutely beautiful on these buildings. Yeah. This is my favorite building. And like we've said, these are, these probably date back to the 17th century. And we don't know what we're going to do with this yet. That's another project. <laughs> Can't even think about that. I can barely think about what, what I'm making for dinner. Yeah. So you started clearing this area. Yeah, there's hay left over from... Yeah. Because it was a hay loft. Watch the hole. You just, you're right near the hole. Other junk. Now that we can open the door over there... Uh, get some airflow so I can clean up more. Well, it gets it's, incredibly dusty. It's old hay, so it's I'm very dusty, I'm sure. Yeah. So I was thinking we would use this room as more of a rumpus room. <laughs> rumpus room. <laughs> a rumpus room where, you know, maybe like a cool little <laughs> library with some comfy chairs and music and you can come in here, drop acid, and <laughs> do whatever you want. We make an effort to be conscious consumers by shopping sustainably. That's why we're excited to have Wild sponsoring this week's video. We switched to Wild deodorant because it's not only kind to our skin, but kind to the planet. Wild is powered by plants made from safe, natural ingredients without harsh chemicals. It's great for all skin types and is vegan and cruelty-free. A big plus for us animal lovers. What's even better is that Wild has no single-use plastics and comes in premium reusable aluminum cases, and the refills are made from compostable bamboo. Wild keeps us smelling great all day and gives us 24-hour protection even after Lincoln has moved 1,000 tons of rubble. Wild makes a mundane moment a bit more fun and satisfying. To receive your 20% off of Wild products, use promo code OFC20. So my, my pockets are filled with bananas and carrots. We usually try to brush them first so they relax and then we get their halters on. So we'll see how this is going to go. I thought it would be fun to get a drone shot of this process, but somehow Lincoln got lost along the way. He arrived after I got the halters on, but I actually think they're less nervous when just one of us shows up. They've gotten so much better in the past several months, and their reward was one banana each, plus some extra brushing time. The farrier will be here in one hour. 
Don't look too excited. <laughs> We put out a vlog, uh, I think it was a few weeks ago, and we mentioned in it that I have Italian citizenship. After that, we got a lot of emails asking, hey, how do I get Italian citizenship? Mm -hmm. I cannot answer every email that we get regarding that. So we thought we'd explain it, and then we're gonna put a link in the description, and then you can, you can figure it out. But we can tell you a little bit about the process I have Italian citizenship because my father was mm. Italian. So it was about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, there were documents that needed to be translated and a lot of minutia. We were told it, even to get an appointment, it would take about a year at that point. But we completely lucked out and within six months, I had an appointment and I had passports for myself and the girls. There are more people trying to do it, so right. there's a much longer delay. You have to make an appointment with the consulate that covers where you live, mm -hmm. and there are nine of them in the U.S. We lucked out because the one for the whole Northwest plus Alaska and Hawaii was in San Francisco where we lived. We were within walking distance of the, <laughs> the consulate. I did get an email from someone maybe a year or so ago, and she said that it would take at least... I think two years to even get an appointment at the consulate. And everything that I've read said it might take even five years to even get your citizenship. You can fast track everything by hiring an immigration lawyer if you, if you have, you know, an extra 10 or 15,000 lying around to <laughs> put to that. And no, I mean, if it, if it means yeah. moving or not moving. We could not live in France as Americans without having EU citizenship or Italian citizenship, which enables us to live or work anywhere in Europe, and we travel freely between right. borders. And the EU has 27 countries, and you can move to any one of them, just like moving to a different state in the US. You don't need to do any kind of application or whatever, you just do it, you have that right. And if you're an American, I mean, I guess there are other ways to do it. People do it. You need a specialized visa. Like if you're a retiree or you're opening some sort of business, right. I they think. They have talent visas. They yeah. have work visas. They have student visas. Mostly are finite. You know, they, they expire. I read that there's a bill going through the Italian government right now, which is likely to be passed that is going to require you to have uh, a certificate saying you speak Italian. And it's to a decent level. It's not, it's like conversational. And that's if, if the person that came from Italy is your great grandparent or later. Mm. If it's further back, you also have to live in Italy for a year. <laughs> so they're trying to make it more difficult because yeah. so many people have been, been applying and there's such a backlog. There's a huge backlog. I mean, it was even <laughs> difficult for me to get an appointment at the Italian consulate in Paris to get our passports renewed. But I didn't know that you could just show up and wait in line. You know, uh -huh. I was trying to get a proper appointment and it's much, much easier if you do. It still took us maybe two to three hours and we were in and out of there, which was fine. So anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated process. So if you really want to look into it. The, the site that I had used was called myitaliancitizenship.com. And they- Do they still exist? They do, they oh, do. Okay. I looked it up, they're, they're still there. They had, for a very reasonable amount, maybe $60, I think, they got official copies of the uh, birth certificates from Italy that you have to have. The grandparents' birth certificates. From Italy. And they, they can give you a checklist of all the documents you're gonna need uh, for the particular situation you're, yeah. you're trying to follow. So if you're trying to get get it, do it now because you, you might not be able to do it ever. I feel very lucky that we're able to live here because, yeah, of, because yeah. of that. Otherwise, where would we, we be? Where would we be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and just a, a thank you to everybody who has, has sent us 
lovely, lovely emails. And I apologize, I have not gotten back to anybody, but we read all the emails and they're just, they've been so nice mm -hmm. and um, really uh, kind of keeps us going with this, whatever we're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> we had um, hunting dogs again. I looked out the window in our bedroom and I saw the donkeys were both pointed in the same direction and usually that means they spot something and mm -hmm. then i saw one of the hound dogs in the in the orchard and of course i'm like <laughs> putting on my boots and run. lincoln's always like 10 million steps behind me like <laughs> okay do i really want to do this so i ended up going out i heard them in our forest i went out into our other parcel of land and i saw the hunter coming down an adjacent parcel and I was standing there with my hands on my hips and he came over and I said hello and I just explained in my broken French that you know his dogs were on the property and he was he was trying to call them and what they actually have it's like a little bugle it's yeah, like a mini it. bugle yeah. and they can't they like I said before they can't control the dogs but I mentioned it in a vlog last week and some people commented or sent messages saying just you know why are you why are you getting so upset about hunting dogs in your property there are a couple of reasons last year the hunting dogs came right in front of the chateau and my daughter was outside on a swing and they actually chased a wild boar out of our forest towards her so that really pissed me off and then the other thing that bothers me is that if there if there's wildlife living on our property such as deer and i did see a deer cross Mm -hmm. that they had chased out this morning and you know that that bothers me i don't think we have a glut of deer here like in c certain no, areas you, you don't see a lot of them but you know if hunters want to hunt deer they're welcome to do it they just can't shoot them on our property yeah but the problem with the dogs <laughs> is they chase them off of the property and then they shoot them so are they technically our deer <laughs> i don't, <laughs> I don't know, know. <laughs> Um, and I know everybody's probably sick of me talking about hunting, but, um, you know, I understand the boar situation where they, they can be devastating to crops. The deer, I know they can also be a nuisance. And these guys are hunting the boar and they eat the boar, they hunt the deer, they eat the deer. I don't like the deer being chased off of my property and being mm -hmm. killed. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a tricky situation and it's just something we have to deal with living here, but I don't have to condone it on my land and I don't. And he was very nice and, you know, I, was, I wasn't, you know, aggressive or not like, I was very aggressive last year with the incident. I was, yeah. I was like soaking wet and swearing. <laughs> this time I was nicer. I just wanted to make sure and that he knew. I hate the thought of the little deer running across mm -hmm. the field chased by these dogs yeah. and then... Uh, I'd like to clarify, you said that they eat the meat. They're not hunting because they need the right. food. It's still sport it's, and they, they're yeah. eating the meat because that's what they want to do. Right. Nobody around here has to hunt for no, the food. No, it's it's just uh, to control, you know, the boar population and because it's a sport in yeah. France mm -hmm. and uh, just it is what it is. Well, we've woken up and it's it's suddenly spring. Yes.
it, it's warm. I don't even need the scarf. Things are starting to bud. We have daffodils up. It feels amazing. And it feels overwhelming because we have a lot of work to do out yeah. here. Yeah. I actually mowed today. And tomorrow you need to do some real mowing. Yeah, I gotta put the deck back on the tractor. We go through this every year, but it still amazes me that spring comes here so early. Right. And this winter sort of zoomed by. It's kind of like how it was in San Francisco, that things start to, to yeah. bloom in February. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's nice. It's nice living here. Oh, look at him run. You're the first for the carrots. Hi, Dominic. Okay, hold on. You always love your close-up shot. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have something to say, leave us a comment.